Hello everybody, Richard here. Welcome back to the channel. And I have been recently doing some little photos or product style photos in the office. Um, and it's been a pain taking out the memory card to put it in the computer and then back in the, uh, back in the camera, back in the computer, back in the camera. So I am setting up a little tethered station and I have done a video on this before on a previous channel, but I thought I'd bring one here to this channel and this is how you do it. So for context, I have this little sort of product photography type area that I've thrown together. And the first thing I will do now is show you just real quick, it's very simple how the camera connects to the computer for tethering. So your camera will have on the side of it a USB port of some description. This is an R6 with a USB-C port. And all that needs is a lead coming out which will then head into the back of the computer. Okay, I am now sitting in front of the computer and I am on a different mic, so apologies if it does sound slightly different. So once you've connected the lead to the computer, you just need to then head into Lightroom, come up to the top left-hand corner where the main, just the menu options basically, file, tethered capture, start tethered capture, and that will give you this dialog box. When that has popped up, you need to name your session. So it could be family portrait or uh, makeup product photo photography or pet studio shoot, whatever you're tethering and whatever you're shooting, whatever is relevant to you, I am gonna call this whiskey product tether test, just so I know what it is. You then have the option to name the images as they are imported, which saves you doing it at a later date. Um, and session name followed by sequence is normally pretty standard. I start at a thousand. And the next section here is the destination section. And that is where the photos that are imported direct from your camera will be saved on your hard drive. If this location isn't correct, you can See the file path here and you can change it by clicking on the choose button and navigating to where you want those files to import into. And once they have imported into your Lightroom catalog, you will see them in the library section in the usual place down the left hand side. And we can also add these to a collection. So let's say you wanted to get them into Lightroom, but at the same time you wanted to go through the images on the iPad with, with your client or with your model or something like that. So all you have to do is tick the box that says add to collection. I'm just gonna pick the office test collection that I've made up, because I'm pretty sure that will sync through to my, my iPad. When you're happy with all of the options, you can even keyword them. So let's say whiskey, glass, product, um, that'll do for now. Um, and that's all those options ticked and we just click on okay. So you can see this little di dialogue box has appeared here and it says EOS R6, that is my camera. I would imagine, I've never tried it, but if you have more than one camera tethered, then you could flick between the two of them. So this little dialog box here is pretty obvious. You can control the shutter speed, you can control the aperture, you can control the ISO, and you can control the white balance. And if you wanted to apply any presets, then you could do that as well. I'm gonna leave that blank. I am gonna change the ISO to 100, um, and I'm gonna go and fix the exposure in the camera in a second. Um, so there's two things we can do here. We can either shoot from here using live view or we can shoot from the camera. I'm gonna start from the camera because it's more reliable, I feel. Um, more control over focusing and the settings and things like that. So I will leave this screen recording. I'm gonna take you back now to the camera. We're gonna get the settings correct, take a photo, and then we should see those images pop up in this folder that we've just set up called Whiskey Product Tether Test. So let's head back now to the camera.
Okay, so here we are on the the camera itself. We can see we've got the camera there and we have the display over there. I don't like the camera settings. They are a bit too bright for me. So let us take the shutter speed up a tiny bit. I'm not gonna to spend too much time on this. I just wanna get a semi-decent photograph. Um, it's a bit moody, a bit warm, a bit whiskey-like, a bit wintry, you know, the kind of thing that you associate with a nice whiskey in a winter's evening by a fire. Okay, so there we have it. We have the product over there and we have the camera ready to take the photo. And I am just gonna take the shot, two second timer, and you will see those two photos have just popped through onto the screen. Let's go in back to the computer and have a look at the next stage, which is taking the photos from the computer itself if you wanted to. Okay, so here we are back on the screen. So you can see the two photos that have come through. Nothing spectacular, but they'll do for this purpose just to show you the tethering. Now, the other option that we have is to take the photos from the computer itself. So you see we looked at this little this um, control panel earlier. If we hit live view, let's just bring this down a bit so we can see them both. If you hit live view, we can see the image that the camera is displaying. I would stress it isn't exact because if you have a look at this image here that we took, you can see that there is more of the table in front. For some reason, we're just losing the bottom here. So definitely take this image with a pinch of salt, but it, if you choose, you'd rather do it from the computer, you can. So from here, I, you can adjust the focus here, but I'm not gonna go into that because I've always found it hit and miss and I don't really like using it. I don't even like using this control panel. I will do everything in the camera, but I thought I would go through it real quick. Um, and it's pretty basic, really. You can adjust the aperture. So let's say if you wanted a bit more depth of field, we can change that to 7.1. That is obviously going to affect the, um, the, the exposure. So we are going to want to give it a longer exposure. And obviously I'm guessing on half of these, that's a little bit too bright. So let's just make it a bit faster. There we go, and if, if you wanted to, if you had to, or if you wanted to increase the ISO, you could as well. We're gonna leave it on 100 for obvious reasons. And again, you can change your develop settings if you want to. Um, what I am gonna do is I am gonna make this one quite a bit brighter, just so that we can see a wrong image come in to prove the difference. So I'm gonna take that back down to two. You can see it's gonna be well overexposed. That's painful, I can't even bring myself to press the shutter button, so I'm gonna just make it a tiny bit darker um, than it was, but it will still be different to what we've taken. I'm just gonna bring the Lightroom back to the grid view. Um, move this to one side, and just up here we should see two images come through. The reason there's two coming in, by the way, JPEG and RAW, um, I always shoot JPEG and RAW, to two cards, um, so I've in effect got four images in case I need to use a JPEG quickly. Um, take the shot. The camera's just clicked, and here are the two coming in that are well overexposed. Um, so that is the basics. Let me just real quickly now grab my iPad and see if the images that we have taken have come through to that collection that we set up at the beginning of the video. Okay, so here is a quick screenshot of my, um, my computer. The two that I took from the camera have come through, but the two that I've just taken haven't, but I would expect them to come through any minute because there are two pending. Um, I'm not going to hang around and watch those come through. We can see that it's worked. So that would mean that if you wanted to, there we go, they've come through. If you wanted to, you had a model and you wanted to take this over to the studio area, then you could quite easily play with these and, you know, just zoom in, give the her point him or her pointers or adjust things on the, on the, 
product table or whatever you want to do. It just gives you that flexibility that you are looking at them on the screen, on a big computer and on your iPad if you wanted to walk around the, the studio or wherever you are as well. So uh, that is a real quick highlight of how you can tether in Lightroom. So there we have it. Thank you for watching that quick video. I hope that was useful and enabled you to get your camera tethered through your computer into Lightroom. Um, if you do find that useful, why not give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more photography tips and tricks and leave me a comment down below if you spotted something I missed or if you just want to say hi, I'd love to hear from you. And until the next video, take care. Thank you.